The back suit matters here. We're waiting for the teams to emerge from the tunnel down to our left-hand side. And you're dead right in what you say, Courtney Sweetman, Kirk. Coventry at home. Only West Brom have won here. I saw them beat Leicester here. You saw them beat my lot here. <laughs> but very convincingly too in both in both cases. Yeah, extremely so. And you know, we were speaking, weren't we, before the game about Mark Robbins and, and what a fantastic job he's done at this club and actually the fact that he's, he's not getting linked to more jobs and you know the commentary fans around us will be happy about that because you know what a job he's doing but I think you know there's been some changes within the club with performance directors and chief execs and I think there's now more of an expectation on Robbins to I think it's three out of five that's come out and said you know three out of five of the seasons you need to get playoffs so maybe he's under a little bit more pressure but still doing a great job well he never comes across as a man under pressure Mark Robbins he's always pretty zen about the whole championship situation and let's face it Coventry snuck in in the last couple of weeks of last season and got all the way to the playoff final only to lose to Luton Town but here they are with a chance to get back into the top six and the clocks haven't even gone back forward yet here we are in early February and Coventry are amongst that chasing pack for what appears to be Courtney two playoff spots how about Millwall though just four points above the, the drop zone at the moment how concerned are you for them I would be because I, I think I mentioned it I don't think they quite know what the, the best side of you know what their best side is yet how they play the best obviously it's a while back now but Gary Browett leaving the club and sort of that change in management so it does take time to to know to adapt to for the manager to, to get those messages across to the players and the manager to decide what the best side is but very much needs to be sooner rather than later because the last thing that you, you want to do at the turn of, year, turn of the year is start getting dragged into to those relegation battles so that they've got to start picking up points sooner rather than later so both sides going through their final preparations and nice to see that both clubs are in their first choice strips this afternoon Coventry in all sky blue with that little graded lighter blue stripe on the shirt Millwall in their navy blue shirts and socks with white shorts just a reminder of the lineups again for Coventry it's Collins in goal Van Avey Latibogier Binks and De Silva in a back four Torp and Eccles holding in midfield Sakamoto O'Hare and Palmer in behind right in attack for Millwall Sarkic the goalkeeper Tanganga Harding and Cooper in a back three McNamara and Brian the wing backs Donore and Honeyman in midfield and then Fleming and Esse in behind Obafemi in attack Andrew Kitching is our referee it's his first year refereeing at championship level he's been on the EFL books for a, a few years now but this is his first season doing regular championship fixtures let me remind you the benches as well for Coventry their benches at Wilson the subkeeper Thomas Kelly Sims Bidwell Godden Tavares Lusala and Stretton for Millwall their bench Bialkowski is the subkeeper along with Wallace Mitchell Bradshaw Mayer Campbell Leonard Watmore and Savile you'll hear more from Mark Robbins at half time incidentally who was chatting with our own Ian Abrahams just prior to these weekend's fixtures as he approaches Courtney seven years in charge he is comfortably the longest serving championship manager yeah it's incredible not just within the championship but you know within any form of football to stay in a job for that long but it shows what you can create and the togetherness that you can create with the fans see with the staff with the players if managers are given time to implement what they want and, and Mark Robbins is the, the epitome of that and even though Joe Edwards, the Millwall manager, was appointed on November the 6th, he's nowhere near the most recent championship manager to come in. John Eustace, of course, arriving at Blackburn yesterday and getting a win. Underway on TalkSport 2, Millwall in their dark blue shirts and socks. They're kicking towards the south stand in the first half, where their supporters are. And they've immediately want to throw that Jaffet Tanganga on loan from Spurs will try and launch into the Coventry City penalty here. They've, they've got Jake Cooper, who's a huge frame, to go and stand right next to Bradley Collins as Tanganga, from the right, launches the throw into the near post. It's flicked on, and it almost got all the way through, and it's turned behind for a corner kick. It was turned behind right at the death. It looked for a moment that somebody was going to be able to steer it in right on the line for Millwall. Corner kick, nil-nil. Yeah, I think it initially gets a flick on by a Millwall player, and then... Not sure. I think it's Hadji Wright that goes for it, gets a touch on it, and it takes a, another deflection on the way. It's a, 
it's a well worked set piece and having a long throw specialist in the team I think is is always very dangerous because the trajectory can get on the ball it's a lot flatter and it'll be a corner once the referee sorted out a bit of pushing and shoving he spotted in the six yard box he's looking at uh, Wes Harding I think who's standing right on the goalkeeper it's going to be Joe Bryan to take this corner for Millwall not a couple of minutes gone yet nil nil but a big chance early on for the London Lions in it comes from Brian right under the crossbar and punched away strongly by Collins but Millwall will retrieve possession it's on this near side with McNamara clips it down the right hand side and a lovely twist and a turn down the right hand side from Romain Esse and he whips a ball in it's cleared away at the near post comes out to McNamara right hand corner of the box sends it in and it's Callum O'Hare back defending I think who helps get it clear and now O'Hare on the break as Coventry come forward Sakamoto on the right hand side Harding thought about going in for a challenge but hang back for a moment Hadji Wright right hand side gives the ball back to Van Evijk and Coventry go back to halfway. the impetus of that counter attack is gone two minutes gone nil nil yeah it's a shame because I think Hadji Wright makes a fantastic run he holds out initially then goes down the channel but that opens up the space in the middle of the box for someone to drive into but I just think the break was that quick that nobody could get up quick enough here is Victor Torp recent arrival from Sarpsborg they're already calling in the torpedo here because of the goal he scored <laughs> on debut against Sheffield Wednesday in the first cup tie which was a bit of a rocket from downtown balls in the Coventry half as Joe Latibodier passes into the centre circle and it's Josh Eccles out to this near side and Jada Silva Eccles again looks for the taller man Torp next to him in the centre of midfield for Coventry City 0-0 on Talk Sport 2 McNamara wins the ball back for Millwall. Honeyman just touches it down to Tanganga. And now McNamara again loses out. Honeyman gets a foot in. Wes Harding steps across from centre half. Clears it against Casey Palmer. But McNamara and Honeyman between them will help it onto halfway. But Coventry get the ball back into their position, possession with Torp. Down for Lati Budier, once of the Manchester City Academy and broke through at Swansea City in the end. Sakamoto just over the halfway line for Coventry good early tempo to this game on TalkSport 2 three minutes gone goalless and Jay De Silva nicks the ball infield for Eccles who's being pressurised by Honeyman gives the ball back to Louis Binks now Casey Palmer wrestling with Tanganga and Tanganga pushed him to the ground right in front of the referee free kick Coventry 0-0 really good by Casey Palmer but that's because McNamara he jumps out of position too quickly for my liking and then Casey Palmer is clever he just gets on the half turn within that space that's been vacated he's in possession now Palmer gives the ball to Callum O'Hare who gives it straight back to the number 45 Palmer looks up to Silva showing from down the line but it's quite tight on this near touch line Coventry attacking the north stand to our left in this first half neat turn from Victor Torp and Palmer and it's now moved in field finds Sakamoto and Palmer was trying to volley it out to Van Awijk on the right wing Millwall couldn't get the ball clear now Van Awijk's away right hand side of the box pulls it back Sakamoto great save Sarkic and Hattie Wright hits the post twice on the follow up and somehow it stays out and Sarkic dives on the ball gratefully Sakamoto's initial shot was well saved it came straight out to the American Hattie Wright two bites of the cherry both off the upright nil nil it stays yeah I think to be honest Dan's both of them have got a score I don't think Sakamoto does enough with, with the first ball yes it's a decent save by Sarkic don't get me wrong but I think he's got to do better and then because the ball comes out to Hadji Wright so quickly is so close he, he just tries to direct it I think it comes off the post it then takes another deflection um, on the way in but Coventry should certainly be one up massive chance then for Hadji Wright who's been in a bit better form of late for Coventry City cost them 7 million plus from Antalya Sport in Turkey scored 16 last season in Turkish football and he's on the charge through the middle here as Brad Collins just launched a long ball straight down the centre of the pitch but Millwall's defenders dealt with it well and it's back with Matija Sarkic bedecked in a sort of a mottled pink goalkeeping outfit today for Millwall telling his centre halves to clear out the penalty area and he will chip the ball into the centre circle goes over the head of Lati Bogier and over the head of Fleming and now it's with Obafemi just lays it off to George Honeyman 
spread out to the near side to us, the Millwall right and McNamara who comes in field. Then it's driven over to the far side by Casper Denori with his shaved blonde hair. Back it goes to Jake Cooper. Denori again has to go back into his own half for Wes Harding. Three at the back for Millwall and the left side is centre half Cooper. Fell to the ground as he tried to clip the ball down the left hand side for Obafemi to give chase but it just trickled through to Brad Collins. Torp, under pressure inside his own half of Coventry, but managed to get the ball up to right on halfway. Wouldn't stick with right, and it's back with Millwall once again, and Denore, good strong run from him, down the left-hand side, rode the challenge quite superbly, tried to guide it back to Joe Bryan, actually escapes the attentions of Bryan, but Jake Cooper tidies up for Millwall, moves into the Coventry half on the far left-hand side of the field. Casper Denore, Again, yet to score since joining from Belgian football, former Belgian under-21 midfielder. Good ball down the Millwall right for McNamara. Up against Jada Silva, lays it off to George Honeyman. Honeyman with a diagonal ball into the box, just over the head of Obafemi. Van Awight was there to get the ball half clear, and then it's lobbed up to halfway, but Cooper will get there ahead of right. And then Coventry will guide the ball down into the path of Sakamoto. And Torp again with another lovely turn, this time to get away from Denore. And he slips it down the right-hand side for Callum O'Hare. O'Hare getting to about 35 yards out, twisting and turning, right-hand corner of the box. Tried to clip it in for right, but Millwall win it back, nil-nil. There's a couple of lovely turns, though, already from Torp. The way that he uses his body, drops the shoulder just to give himself half a yard and then comes out with it. But then he's also got that quality on the ball, that presence of mind to find a sky blue shirt as well he was in the stands when I was here for Coventry beating Leicester a couple of weeks ago having just signed from Sarpsborg just taking it all in and he's been given his chance pretty much straight away by Mark Robbins in the centre of Coventry's midfield, seven minutes gone on TalkSport 2, Coventry nil, Millwall nil, Coventry bidding to go back into the championships top six Millwall Starting the day just four points above the bottom three in England's second tier. Right, heavy touch from him, couldn't keep control of it and it drifted out. And Wes Harding, who came through the Birmingham City Academy but didn't get that many chances, really emerged when he went to Rotherham United, the Jamaican. And he's going to leave the throw for Spurs' lonely Jaffet Tanganga. And Tang Tanganga looks for Honeyman, under pressure immediately from Eccles. So he goes back for Jake Cooper. And Cooper will get just over the half one on. Chips the ball forward looking for Obafemi. It'll break for McNamara. Right hand side of the box. Obafemi with his back to goal. Turns. Gets it onto his right foot. Hits it straight at Collins who pats it down. And Jada Silva lobs it away. Throw into Millwall. Nil nil. It actually comes to something in the end. But I think McNamara has probably got more time than he thinks now. I think he can take another touch. Drive into the box and then maybe cut it back to a teammate but this is where Millwall are causing Coventry problems on that right hand side both the full backs or sorry the wing backs go and overload the midfield and, and De Silva is getting caught in two minds at times you know does he go to McNamara on the right hand side there's Eze as well that's sort of uh, occupying the half space so that's where they're overloading Coventry and it's working well that's the voice of Courtney Sweetman Kirk alongside me Ian Danta Courtney former Sheffield United and Liverpool women striker we are your home of the EFL Proud of that too. Talk Sport 2 at the Coventry Building Society Arena. Coventry nil, Millwall nil as we approach 10 minutes in the Midlands. Van Avijk, who scored against Leicester for his second goal and treated it like he'd scored a goal in a World Cup final. <laughs> Such was his joy. De Silva, the other fullback, works the ball back in field to Louis Binks. And now Eccles splits the two centre halves for a moment and then passes left for Binks, still inside his own half here, De Silva on halfway, tries to set Callum O'Hare away down the Coventry left, but Harding comfortably there first to guide it back to his keeper, Sarkic with a first time clearance, it will stay in play <coughs> on this near side, the Millwall right, but Binks steps forward and heads it out of play for a Millwall throw, nil-nil. Interesting there, O'Hare, when he's pressing hard and he was never going to get to the ball but then he's telling Hadji Wright to get up he knows it's going to go back to the goalkeeper so try and get a, a bit of pressure on Sarkic there Wright's got eight goals this season he is the top scorer at Coventry City the American although O'Hare having just got back into the team is already on six yeah he's incredible since the 
December when he came back, made his first start. The, the impact that he's made, considering the, the length of time he was out. I think, you know, we've seen it before. I think a great example is, is Virgil van Dijk. Yes, he was back playing, but he took quite a while to, to be, get back to his best, whereas Callum O'Hare has hit the ground running. Mill will have a free kick just over the halfway line right next to where Mark Robinson stood at the edge of his technical area. 11 minutes gone. Coventry nil, Millwall nil. Matt Namara sends a diagonal free kick to the left-hand corner of the area. Cooper heads it into the Coventry box, but it's volleyed away by Lati Bodier. Honeyman guides it down, and Joe Bryan, the last man, keeps it away from Callum O'Hare and nods it back to his keeper, Sarkic. Sarkic with the ball out to the left-hand side. Cooper stayed forward, and he's found the ball to Kasper Denori. He's gone into the box. Sion Fleming in there too, and it's just driven in for a goal. Romain Essett has given Millwall the lead, suddenly let fly with his left boot. As Fleming got into the area, the ball got away from him, but it ran through for the youngster. And Romain Esser, who scored on the opening weekend against Middlesbrough, scores again, and Millwall have an unlikely lead at the CBS Arena. Coventry nil, Millwall won. Tell you what though, Dance, it's a fantastic strike, but this all comes from the transition from Coventry, so the ball goes long. Callum O'Hare again, he's chasing, he's telling everyone to get up with him. The ball goes back and as you mentioned, Cooper's still up there. And they just get caught in the transition commentary. There's such a big gap between the, the midfield and the defence and Denore does really well initially and then when it drops to Eze, it's a, a fantastic strike. He hits it quickly, doesn't let Collins get set, finds the corner. It's a wonderful strike and probably would say a little bit against the run of play but I think Millwall were growing into this game. So Romain Esser, just 18 years young, an academy graduate in South Bermondsey. Scored the winner when they beat Middlesbrough on the opening weekend and he's put Millwall in front here against the playoff chasing Sky Blues. 13 minutes gone on TalkSport 2. And Coventry try and send the ball up to halfway. And here is O'Hare scampering over the halfway line. Honeyman with a brilliant challenge to win the ball back for Millwall. And then Esther, the goal scorer, plays a 1-2 with Obafemi. Held the ball up well on halfway. Now the ball's with McNamara on the Millwall right. And he just tidies it back for Tanganga. Drops his shoulder to get away from O'Hare. That was neatly done. But then Tanganga looks for the invisible man over on the far side of the field. I think Joe Bryan was about 20 yards further back than he expected. And Coventry have a throw. 13 minutes gone. Coventry nil Millwall won, Courtney Sweetman Kirk. Yeah, and I, I don't mind the idea. Obviously, the execution's really poor, but as I mentioned, and it was it's similar for the goal, the wide areas are, are really the place that Millwall are managing to hurt Coventry. The wing backs are getting high and they're overloading. The midfielders aren't coming across for Coventry to help the defenders. Heavy touch from Casey Palmer on halfway, just gave the ball straight back to Romain Esset. And then Fleming knocks it back to Cooper on halfway. Honeyman takes over down the left-hand side, faced up by Van Ewijk. Bryant knocks it in field to Denore, and then Honeyman has it again, scheming around the halfway line. Hits a diagonal ball, trying to get McNamara in behind. That's a sensational ball from Honeyman. McNamara pulls it back. Obafemi with a drive, and it's kept out, shoveled away by Brad Collins. That would have been a quite superb counter-attacking goal from Millwall. But Collins denies Obafemi and it stays 1-0 to the Lions. Yeah, and it's another one where Collins does well, but similar to the opportunity with Sakamoto earlier, I think Obafemi has to do better there. He hits the target, but it's almost like he's just trying to find the target rather than really hit through the ball. But it's a fantastic ball to find McNamara, and this is a real issue now. And De Silva, he's got to be able to, to see the half space, and that ball travels 60 yards, so he's got the time to get across, but he's got to open his body up and see where McNamara is. What a pass, though, from George Honeyman. What a spot to see the run that McNamara was making. And Obafemi on loan from Burnley, yet to score in Millwall's colours. May not have a better chance than that all afternoon here at the Coventry Building Society Arena, where we played a quarter of an hour. Coventry nil, Millwall won. Here's Tanganga for Millwall. Finding McNamara. Forced back to halfway. But Tanganga receives it back and goes all the way back to Matija Sarkic who's got plenty of experience of playing football in the Midlands with Wolves and with Birmingham City joined from Wolves kept six clean sheets so far this season he would dearly love to keep a seventh now that Millwall are in front here 
Here's Denore. Oh, he's lost out to O'Hare just over the halfway line, but back came Fleming to try and put a foot in and stop a counter attack. Honeyman headed it down to Denore, who was being wrestled to the ground by O'Hare. And you sense, Courtney Sweetman Kirk, that between Honeyman and O'Hare on either side, it's those two players and what they do that's going to have the biggest effect on the result here this afternoon. Yeah, it is, and, and there's two areas to look at in terms of what the, the wing-backs, especially McNamara, is doing. One, obviously, the, the defenders, the full-backs have got to do better, but also in terms of Honeyman, it's a fantastic ball, but it's got to be stopped at Saw. So that's where Coventry have got to get higher, they've got to get closer to Honeyman so he can't play those balls. Free kick to Millwall, taken by Sarkic, midpoint of his own half, the goalkeeper. Clips it up to the edge of the area. The giant Cooper knobs it down. Obafemi turns at the edge of the D, trying to make space for a shot. There were plenty of sky blue shirts around him. And Coventry get it clear. Van Ayer might just put his foot through it. And Sarkic will collect from pretty much where he took the free kick. Now he hits a diagonal ball lap, looking for the goal scorer, Esset, up against Jay De Silva. And the diminutive De Silva got the better of Esser that time. And it goes back to Lati Baudier. More live football to come on TalkSport and TalkSport 2 over the next couple of days. Chelsea Palace tomorrow night on Monday night, game night on TalkSport with Adrian Durham, Sam Matterface and Danny Murphy. Championship on Tuesday, Swansea against Leeds. And then on Wednesday, Millwall, Ipswich. We're back with the Lions again. Here's Denore up to the edge of the area. Zion Fleming trying to take a touch. He's being hassled and harried. Works it back for Essex. Out to the Millwall right wing. McNamara with a deep cross to the far post. Collins punches it into the danger zone. He's almost punished. Comes out to Joe Bryan, who fires a left-footed shot just wide of the post. And Millwall very nearly two up as Coventry looks a little uncertain at the back. Yeah, they're just completely overrun. Because what happens is even if it doesn't go out to the wide areas with McNamara and Bryan, then you've got Fleming, Obafemi and Essay there then working it so the fact that you know, that Coventry back four are struggling to pick them all up. You've then got Denore that's then coming late from the midfield, so it's almost 4v4, and then you've got the freedom of McNamara and Brian in the wide areas. Tanganga gets his head to the goal kick clearance from Brad Collins. Goes out for a Coventry throw. 18 minutes gone on Talk Sport 2. Coventry nil, Millwall 1. Romain Esset on 12 minutes putting Millwall ahead. Coventry send the ball forward, trying to get Hadji right into the game. And it's Wes Harding this time who cushions a header out of play for a Coventry throw, right next to our commentary position. Our commentary position in the West Stand, closer to Matthias Sarkic's goal than Brad Collins in the South Stand. And we're about 20 rows back from pitch level. Really good viewpoint here at Coventry City as Palmer is caught by McNamara, takes the free kick quickly and it's worked down in front of our commentary position with Jada Silva on the left. Early ball in field for Hadji Wright. Tried to burst between two players and Denari pulled back on his shoulder and now Coventry City have a free kick 25 yards out to the left of centre. Somebody's going to go for goal from here. Coventry nil more will one. Yeah, it's a, a fantastic area. It's just enough away from the box for the fact that you can get it back up and over the wall. That's a bit of inventiveness from Coventry, the fact that they're playing it quickly. Callum O'Hare, of course, is at the heart of it. He wants the ball, playing it round to Jay De Silva on this left-hand side. And then, rightly so, it's punched into to Hadji Wright and he manages to, to win the free kick. Victor Torp is the man standing over it, the recent arrival from Sarpsborg. So it's 25 yards out to the left of centre. There's a five-man wall for Millwall. Now it's four as... Honeyman moves away. Torp runs up to the ball, right footed, clatters it goalwards, tipped over by Sarkic. Got quickly across to his right and tipped it over the bar for Coventry's first corner of the game. 1 0 Millwall. Yeah, it's a big save from Sarkic. It's not quite as in the corner as Torp will have wanted it to give the keeper no chance, but he certainly hits it with a lot of venom and gets it up and down quick enough, but it's Sarkic as well to get across his goal. I think that was creeping under the crossbar if Sarkic hadn't got a touch. Corner to Coventry, Torp's. Come across to this near side to take it, the northwest corner. Palmer's lurking at the edge of the area, so Sakamoto. Wright's the only Coventry player in the six yard box. Players making a run from the far side as it comes in. Denore got a thigh on it at the near post. It wasn't the best delivery from Torp, but it's gone behind for a second successive corner to Coventry. Millwall one up. 
And it wasn't the best delivery. You've got to make sure, first and foremost, you've got to beat that first man at the front post. So Torp spots the ball down again. On the white line, there's a rarity. <laughs> rather than trying to gain as much centimetres as you can. Torp again then, right-footed, goes deeper to the far post, over Hadji's head, sails over his head. Honeyman gets a vital foot in to stop Sakamoto getting a touch, and the ball will trickle out of play for a Coventry throw further back towards the halfway line on their right-hand side. 1-0 to Millwall, if you're just tuning in to Talk Sport 2. We've played nearly a quarter of the game. Romain Esset with a thumping left-footed finish with the ball broke to him inside the penalty area. Left Brad Collins in the Coventry goal standing as the ball rifled past him. In front of those Millwall fans, delighted with the way that the visitors have started this game as they bid to get away from trouble. They've won four away games so far this season. Drawn five and lost six. As we mentioned, Coventry's only defeat here came in the autumn against West Bromwich Yarbin. Coventry have won a free kick after Esso was using a bit too much physicality on Louis Binks and he's been he's been booked as well for that challenge and he can't believe he has been booked by Andrew Kitching and I must say neither can I Courtney no I can't and I think Coventry have got away with one there they're playing themselves into trouble J.D. Silver initially he checks us is it going to go long he comes short receives the ball and just doesn't do enough with it and equally there's probably not enough movement around him to play the ball Coventry don't look themselves in this first 23 minutes they don't and they're in possession with a talk back for Joel Latibudier just moves into the centre circle Eccles gives it back to Lati Budier and now Binks to his left will stroke it out to this near touchline and De Silva but McNamara straight on top of him so he can't make any progress down this near side the Coventry left so Coventry have switched play over to the right hand side it's with Van Ewijk still inside his own half and he plays a 1-2 with Torpen Millwall are forcing Coventry back more and more and more and a clearance from Collins might break for Callum O'Hare it's a neat cushion header and Victor Torp now under pressure from Denore and Denore has fouled him I thought for a moment Millwall had won possession back cleanly but referee Kitching said that was a foul 1-0 Millwall well I suppose when you look at it like that the consistency of the, the two fouls I don't think either are fouls but if you, you give one you've got to give the other but you speak about Millwall they've been so aggressive um, in the press and playing three at the back and they have spent more time in a three rather than the five and McNamara and Brian are getting really high and you see as soon as the, the fullbacks for Coventry get the ball they go, they go and they're so aggressive in the press and that's why Coventry have struggled to get out That's Courtney Sweetman Kirk alongside me Ian Tanter here at the Coventry Building Society Arena you're listening to Coventry nil, Millwall 1 in the EFL Championship on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's order McDonald's with McDelivery on the McDonald's app and you get tasty rewards points 18 plus terms and conditions apply throw to Millwall midway point of the Coventry half of the field over on the far side of the field from us in the east stand side Joe Bryan looking for an option Denoris comes short Obafemi screaming for it at the corner of the penalty area Denoris receives it but he was always struggling to get the ball under control and then O'Hare tries to roll it up to Hadji right he felt he was being held by Jake Cooper and Millwall won it back and again the ball swung from left to right to find Danny McNamara but his attempted 1-2 with Esser doesn't come off Louis Binks turns away from Esser gives the ball back to Eccles inside his own penalty area again Millwall pressing high up the field and as Van White tries to clear it comes off the backside of Zion Fleming and goes behind for a Coventry goal kick the Millwall fans behind that goal in the south stand delighted with what they're seeing from Joe Edwards team rightly so and, and I said Coventry weren't themselves but that's you've got to give Millwall credit for the way they've pressed how aggressive they've been and in terms of trying to smother Coventry and you see there not normally that flappable at the back but it's the pressure that's being put on them that they're, they're second guessing what to do with the ball Coventry and there's been a lack of recognition of where the space is because the wing backs are getting high there's so much space down the side but they're, they're not able to get the ball that high up the pitch at the moment here's George Honeyman for Millwall it's got a nudge in the back there from O'Hare I thought well not spotted by the referee Joe Edwards imploring with the referee to make a decision but Coventry have the ball back and there's no foul Binks passes the ball up to halfway little touch from Casey Palmer trying to lay it off to O'Hare got away from him De Silva works it in field but it's stolen back by Denori now Obafemi tries to lob it down the left hand side of the area expecting Fleming to have made a run which he hadn't done and it's back with Coventry but 
Van der Heijwijk is then dispossessed by Fleming down the left hand side Coventry it's sixes and sevens at the back at the moment played down the dead ball line for Casper Denori works it back for Fleming by the corner flag trying to get the better of Van Heijwijk to get a cross in for Millwall back for Joe Bryan on the left hand side drives for the byline hits it against Van Heijwijk he's crossed in Latibodier heads it up in the air at the near post and then Torp volleys clear Sakamoto trying to keep it in play but it just bobbles out for a Millwall throw and the Lions are enjoying the Lions share 1-0 up yeah they are and Collins came for that ball as well and he was in no man's land didn't get anywhere near it and the, just the the communication at that point between themselves and the defenders wasn't good enough that comes off a Millwall head it trickles in the back of the net dance throw into Millwall Millwall point of the Coventry half on the Millwall left Obafemi receives it from Brian works it back to Cooper Cooper just lobs a high ball up to the right hand left hand corner of the penalty area but it's won back by Lati Budier and now for Coventry their goalkeeper Brad Collins square ball inside his 18 yard box for Binks and again there's a high press from those Millwall strikers they thread the ball through eventually to Van Awight via a deflection off Denore and he finds Callum O'Hare just over the halfway line hugging the right hand touch line back for Van Awight and now Binks can't control the ball as it goes past him a little bit has to check back five or six yards to retrieve the loose ball and now Binks will find De Silva but again McNamara straight on Jay De Silva they are not allowing Coventry any space in behind whatsoever Millwall whether it's in Coventry's half or their own half but here comes Victor Torp finding Binks who can get up to the halfway line finds De Silva again once more within two paces McNamara's right on top of him so it goes back to Binks once more Palmer back to help out on the halfway line Mark Robbins shouting out instructions just down to our right hand side to his players 27 minutes gone Coventry nil, Millwall 1 on TalkSport 2 here's Van A. White for the Sky Blues cuts in field finds Callum O'Hare who pirouettes in the midway point of the half runs into Honeyman but the ball's back with Torp for Coventry Sakamoto out to the right hand side and Van A. White was Sakamoto caught off the ball Coventry fans want a free kick but instead play continues and Jake Cooper down by his own corner flag left hand side clears down the far touchline Coventry try and win it back Van White goes down he was caught by Joe Bryan free kick down the right hand side of the penalty area for Coventry City who trail 1-0 here yeah that one was certainly a foul but it's interested in that build up for Coventry there was a couple of passes where the ball into O'Hare for example was a little bit behind him the ball that then O'Hare plays in the end it, it needs a little bit more on it just those little you know, one percent that we normally see from Coventry, especially in the final third, that they move it so quickly, it's just not quite there at the moment. Torp will take the free kick. Millwall holding their line level with the penalty spot. It's pretty much level with the right hand corner of the penalty area. This free kick, yard in from the far touch line. Torp to swing it in right footed. Sarkic waits in his six yard box. In it comes from Torp. A couple of players go to ground. One of them is Hadji Wright and the ball was headed away by Honeyman to this near side and Coventry will have a throw that Callum O'Hare wanted to take quickly initially and eventually will give it back to Jada Silva who finds Binks O'Hare collects a, a ball midway point of the half gives it out left to De Silva back to Binks on halfway O'Hare again who was being challenged straight away <laughs> by Honeyman right next to him and now Binks finds Palmer, little touch, gets O'Hare away, tried to re-release -re Palmer down the left-hand side. He can do it the second time of asking. Can Palmer keep it and play at the dead ball line? He can. Tries to play through the legs of Tanganga and make his way into the area. De Silva gets the better of Honeyman for a moment, finds Palmer. Palmer level with the edge of the box, works in field to Torp. Torp with a first-time ball trying to get Callum O'Hare in inside the box, but Millwall had numbers back and got the ball away but only half clear oh and then De Silva trying to touch it in field gives it straight to Denori Fleming loses possession O'Hare is caught Torp loses possession and that allows the referee to bring play back and give Coventry the advantage and a free kick in the centre of the Millwall half for that challenge on Callum O'Hare 1-0 Millwall this is what we're more used to seeing from Coventry moving the ball more precisely more quickly in the final third initially I think Torp does well to try and play that ball through to Callum O'Hare because it's Fleming that's coming back defending um, on his back shoulder so does well there but then Fleming second time of asking makes the foul and Torp's over this I think it's despite the power that he's got within his shots I think it's too far out to, to take a shot on now it is slightly to the left of centre and bang in the middle of the 
Millwall half of the field half an hour gone 1-0 Millwall it's taken short Casey Palmer gets his head up and will give it to Torp who's in the inside left channel now De Silva fires the ball into O'Hare now Palmer turns left hand corner of the box De Silva makes a run to the byline pulls in a cross goal it's palmed away by Sarkic at his near post and McNamara guides it down to Esse who will complete the clearance for Millwall another half chance for Coventry City to equalise yeah and it's a lot better from Coventry because they're moving the ball at a much better tempo and actually Jay De Silva's having that bit of a battle now with McNamara McNamara has, has pushed him back so much but Jay De Silva's like no tell you what I'm going to get forward how are you going to deal with it key battle in this game between the number two of Millwall and the number three of Coventry City at the moment you would say it's the Millwall man who's on top Eccles for Coventry inside his own half finds Torp on the halfway line now De Silva up against McNamara again comes in field and works it infield to Callum O'Hare tried to lob it into the box looking for Hadji right but got his angles wrong and it just bobbled through to Matthias Sarkic Coventry nil Millwall one on your home of the EFL talk sport to 31 minutes gone here at the Coventry Building Society Arena well you can tell it's better from Coventry because for the first time there for a sustained period Millwall are actually in a back five rather than the three and making the wing backs go really high so it's shown that they've put the pressure on but now it's about those final touch touches in the in the last third can you be composed and find that killer touch but I think for me as well had you right in the middle needs to do a little bit better with his movement it's quite static and I think he, he needs to, to provide more movement one for himself to get on the ball but also if he moves it, it dislodges that back three and Callum O'Hare or, or one of the, the midfielders Torp can then try and uh, get in that space but that's the problem isn't it it's one of Hadji Wright against three and what he needs Hadji Wright is probably O'Hare getting closer to him I'm sure he wants to and Palmer too but they can't get close to him because of the way Millwall have gone about their business so far this afternoon yeah they've played extremely well and got that shape right but as you say I think there's a little bit of that battle because as then as a midfielders because they're being overran you don't want to vacate that space in case Millwall break but it's one of those you've got to it's, a, it's that risk and reward situation where they have got to get closer to Hadji Wright to be able to obviously create those opportunities but they don't want to be outnumbered on the counter-attack that's Courtney Sweetman Kirk, you can hear alongside me, Ian Danter here at the Coventry Building Society Arena. 12 minutes to half time. Coventry get away down the right hand side. Van A. White to the byline, puts a cross in. Hadji Wright trying to steer it goalwards from around the six yard box, but didn't seem to believe in himself that he could get that shot goalwards. And it just came off his toe end and behind for a Millwall goal kick away to our left, and the Lions still lead 1 0. It was a bit of an awkward one for Hadji Wright. It's behind him, he's stretching, it's sort of a that awkward height at midriff and you're trying to work out what body part you can throw towards it Sarkic will take the goal kick for Millwall up to Zion Fleming who tried to bring the ball downfield he's being manhandled by Van Awey but Coventry bring the ball away with Eccles Fleming got straight to his feet and tried to retrieve possession little dummy from Casey Palmer and offside against Hadji Wright as he tried to latch onto the loose ball down the left side of Coventry's midfield. So Millwall will have a free kick. Not quite at the midway point of their own half. Joe Edwards, 37 years young, the new Millwall manager. I say new, he's been in charge since the 6th of November. Won four out of his 16 games before today. He was released at 16 by Chelsea, but immediately persuaded by Chelsea to go into the, the coaching realm. They obviously saw something in him, a, a teenage player that there was something about him that could work as a coach yeah very very rare but obviously his young age now managing a championship it shows they were they're exactly right to to look at him from that perspective work with the England under 20s as well more recently Joe Edwards and he watches on as Essa the goal scorer tries to keep possession at the corner flag on the far side of the field or from us but it's gone out of play for a Coventry City goal kick 10 minutes to half time on Talk Sport 2. Coventry City nil, Millwall 1. And Millwall good value for the lead. If you're just tuning in, Romain Esser with the goal on 12 minutes. Coventry have huffed and puffed, but they've not, apart from one effort that was tipped over by Matthias Arkic in a double ricochet off the post when Hadji Wright was well placed after Sakamoto saw a shot saved. That's as close as Coventry have come. Millwall have been asking lots of questions, particularly down the flanks but here's Callum O'Hare sprinting away for Coventry down the right hand side great defending Wes Harding coming across showing his strength getting there first but his clearance is shanked out of play 
for a Coventry City throw, 1-0 Millwall. You mentioned, Dance, that comes from the fact that Callum O'Hare is higher up, is closer to Hadji Wright, and now they're starting to find those spaces in the right areas when the wing-backs of Millwall vacate. Oh, Torp finds O'Hare, back for Casey Palmer! The shot is deflected over the bar by Wes Harding's header. Great defending from Harding, because the layback for Palmer, around 12 yards, is superb. He got plenty of power behind the shot. But Harding flicked it over. Corner Coventry. Brilliant defending, but that's the difference between the first shot with Sakamoto, where you look at that from Casey Palmer. He hits it with such conviction, and it's definitely going in the back of the net for for not for West Harding. So another corner for Coventry. Their third of the half at the north stand end to our left. Victor Torp with a right-footed ink swinger to come. Only O'Hare is in the six-yard box for Coventry. He's gone deep to the far post. Sarkic couldn't get the punch clear but there was nobody on the end of it in the sky blue shirt. Fleming heads it out the box. De Silva retrieves it on the far right-hand side for Coventry City. Now Sakamoto through the legs of Fleming but then back comes Honeyman with some great tenacious defending to win the ball back for Millwall. It's out of play and Millwall have been awarded a throw in their left-back position. 1-0 to Millwall it stays we've got just over eight minutes to half time on Talk Sport 2 I think Honeyman's been excellent today he's been absolutely everywhere his heat map I think would be incredible because he's you know, when Millwall have pressed high and not let Coventry out he's been that one backing up you know the back of the midfield and then in, in that instance he's coming back and helping his defensive line out he's, he's been so close to, to all the Coventry players that he's, he's been around to make sure he's putting the pressure on he's been excellent former Sunderland and Hull City midfielder George Honeyman Got a couple of assists this season, hasn't scored. And you can see why he's had a couple of assists to his name. The, the ball in particular to set Danny McNamara away for a chance that just went begging for Millwall was a particularly good example. Coventry in possession on halfway with Binks in the centre circle. To his right is Lati Bogier. Now Tort picks it up and slides it down the right-hand side for O'Hare. Sakamoto went to ground under pressure from Denore. But the referee says play on. Coventry's still in possession. Sakamoto just gets a toe in ahead of Donore. And the ball hits the corner flag on the far side and goes out for a Millwall throw right by that corner flag. I think Coventry is starting to... Now just the momentum swinging in their way a little bit, looking at the, the big scoreboard now. We're ticking into 39th minute, but they probably don't want half time to come, really. They're, they're just starting to have more possession of the ball, more meaningful opportunities and half-time will almost come at the wrong time for them. It's about 63% possession for Coventry at the minute. It was more like 53 a few minutes ago. They've been ramping it up a little bit, but Millwall still leads. Sakamoto gets no change at all out of Joe Bryan as the ball slid down the right-hand side, but Sakamoto's made a run for the throw, taken quickly, and he slides it into the box, but Honeyman is there again to step in front of Hadji Wright and win it back for Millwall. Ball's out of play. Be a throw to Coventry on the far side of the field, taken by Van Avijk. Eccles knocks it back to Lati Bogier. It's about three George Honeyman's out there. <laughs> Casey Palmer for Coventry. Back into the centre circle for Eccles. Gets his head up. He's got options left and right. Plays a square ball left for Palmer. Once again, who's quite deep in this build-up for Coventry. Now O'Hare knows he's got... Harding and Tanganga behind him and Tanganga slid in really well on Callum O'Hare and got the ball clear they're trying not to give Callum O'Hare any space at all, that's why he's dropping deeper because that's the only place he really gets the ball and can turn and look at what's in front of him and what's impressed me with Millwall is the fact that it's not just a, a man to man It's, it, for example Tanganga's following him now but then George Honeyman's obviously been very close to him as well and it's just interesting how the communication they're passing O'Hare on very well Sakamoto right hand side for Coventry has support from Van White. finds Callum O'Hare right hand corner of the box tries to exchange passes with Sakamoto Little tangle of legs over on that far side Millwall eventually can't keep it in play Coventry throw five minutes to the break Coventry desperate for an equaliser before they go in at half time Here's Victor Torp, right-hand corner of the area. Plays a little one-two with O'Hare. Doesn't come off for him, though. Just cleared away by Joe Bryan. Millwall are getting the foot in at the important point. Most of the time. Back with Lati Budgier on halfway. Square ball for Josh Eccles, who looks up and sends it out to this near side. The Coventry left and De Silva. Palmer. Finds the silver again, who's come in field for a moment. Slides it into Hadji Wright, who tried to take it on his right and move in field, but he was offside anyway, the American. So Mill will get themselves a free kick. What's Mark Robbins thinking right now, Courtney Sweetman-Kirk? 
Is he? He's thinking annoyed? why he's had your right offside for the the second time. <laughs> I think will be one of the first ones. Um, but I think he'll he'll be disappointed with with the start. I mean, there's two sides to it. I think the fact that they didn't score early on with that opportunity with Sakamoto and, and Hadji Wright, they'll be disappointed. And then the fact that they let Millwall overrun them. I think they'll be happy with the fact that on the pitch they've adapted, they've started to to figure it out. But obviously going in potentially 1-0 down um, is something that he won't be happy with. And I think he, he'll want to see more from his forward line, to be honest. Well, uh, t- uh, Eccles went down midway point of his own half. Coventry fans were howling for a free kick he's just on his elbows and knees planted face down to the turf he's holding his his right calf as he tries to get to his feet just obviously got a whack and he's showing the referee where he was caught <laughs> but uh, the referee's not interested he's going to start with a, an uncontested drop ball I do miss the contested drop balls it's that Wayne Rooney one that always springs to mind oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, what was a Courtney Sweetman Kirk drop ball like? Did you get involved with that sort of thing? Uh, I did it every so often, if needed. Not not scared to do that. Oh, I, I can imagine you were never scared. <laughs> do anything. I wouldn't want to get in a drop ball situation with you. I think I'd be showing the referee my uh, battle scars the way Josh Eccles just was. Coventry in possession, but three minutes only of normal time left in this first half. Mill will still lead by a goal to nil on TalkSport 2. Your home of the EFL. Torp on halfway, tries to play the ball through to right, in slid Wes Harding, good clearance again from the Millwall number 45 and then Esther the goal scorer tried to fire it downfield into Obafemi chested down there by Eccles, Palmer McNamara out of position and Palmer was brought down by Tanganga, free kick to Coventry City, they want to get on with it but Tanganga is of course doing that clever professional thing of holding onto the ball whilst he's talking to the referee to annoy Jay De Silva <laughs> Here is Palmer receiving the free kick. Almost slipped and that allowed Millwall time to intercept and get the ball clear. But it's only as far as Louis Binks on halfway for Coventry City. Left to Josh Eccles. Palmer will knock it back to Louis Binks. Who's on loan from Bologna. Played in Major League Soccer for Montreal a couple of years ago. Eccles finds Palmer back for Binks once again. Looking for an option. Hadji is making Hadji Wright is making runs along that three-man back line for Millwall. But they're not releasing him when he feels he's got that little bit of space. Lovely turn on the halfway line, tight to the touchline from Sakamoto. And then Van Awey releases Callum O'Hare. Hadji calling for a cross in the box. In it comes from O'Hare. Hadji Wright gets his head to it. And Sarkic can palm it down. It wasn't going in. It was to the right of his right-hand post. And he just palmed it down and make sure he didn't have to take a goal kick and he could clear it from hands. 1-0 to Millwall. It's better though when they're getting numbers up Coventry because O'Hare's gone down the right-hand side. There was Hadji Wright that obviously contested the ball. There's Casey Palmer behind him and then Jay De Silva backing up the, the back of the box, which they've not really done so far in this game. Sarkic's goal kick headed back towards halfway by Lati Bugia, but drops for Honeyman who again looks instantly for where Danny McNamara is McNamara right hand side suddenly has two Coventry players closing him down so Mill will work it back towards the halfway line Honeyman again chips it down the right hand side looking for Romain Esset uh, the youngster can't control it throw in to Coventry we're about to find out how much minimum stoppage time we'll have at the end of this first half on TalkSport 2 Coventry fans stick with us at the break you'll hear more from your manager Mark Robbins speaking to us ahead of this weekend seven years almost in charge handball from Jake Cooper on halfway and the ball wasn't stationary as Victor Tork tried to release Palmer down the left hand side and Millwall now have everybody behind the ball as Coventry tried to play a quick free kick fourth official Lee Doughty about to hold up the board just down beneath it's just one minute of minimum stoppage time that we're moving into now on Talk Sport 2 here's Josh Eccles for the Sky Blues just over the halfway line to the left of centre plays the ball further infield for Torp swings it out to the inside right channel for Van Ewey now Sakamoto on the wing level with the edge of the area cuts in field chips the ball in on his left good header clear by Jake Cooper for Millwall Lati Bogier gets there ahead of Obafemi and then Binks lofts it down the left hand side asking Palmer to give chase will he keep it in play 
he hooks it back he's kept it in play as well but gave it straight to Honeyman who was at the right hand corner of his own box Millwall try and get it clear Casper Denori brings it down very neatly on his chest and spreads it right to Honeyman Esser will hit the ball well you heard it <laughs> clunk off his right boot over halfway and it'll bounce all the way through to Brad Collins referees having a look at his watch one or two around us making their way to the concourses and the referee blows the half time whistle and Coventry City's bid to get back into the championship top six has hit the buffers a little bit as Millwall have come here and taken the lead in their bid to get away from trouble at the bottom of the table Romain Esset their young 18 year old slamming the ball home on 12 minutes after good work down the left hand side by Zion Fleming it was an emphatic finish from Essa. Coventry had had great chances to take the lead themselves, notably a shot from Tatsuhiro Sakamoto, blocked out by Matthias Sarkic, straight to the American Haji right there, top scorer. But somehow he contrived to hit the post not once, but twice as he tried to turn the ball into the back of the net. Palmer's had a shot, turned over the crossbar by the head of Wes Harding. That looked destined for the back of the net. But Millwall equally could have been 2 0 up. Michael Obafemi bringing a good save out of Brad Collins away to our right hand side. But the Millwall fans going away for their pie and a pint at half time. By far the happier, Courtney Sweetman Kirk. Yeah, 100%. And I think they've won that battle in the wide areas, Millwall. You know, J.D. Silva, Van Evak, in you know, they've started to get into the game now, but I think they were so worried because they were overrunning in midfield that they didn't want to get high. They didn't want to vacate that area because, you know, of how Millwall got higher in the wide areas and then especially that front three of them almost locked onto the, the defensive four. So it was a really good showing and, and Honeyman in the middle has been absolutely fantastic. Callum O'Hare really for most of the game hasn't had a sniff and the only time he has is when he's pulled out to wide areas to to try and find some space so they've done a great job um, between I think uh, Tanganga um, in, in the midfielders Honeyman Denore to, to try and mark him out the game and the finish from Essa was rifled home yeah it was brilliant and what I like about it is he doesn't hesitate he just takes it quickly hits it hard and true it's a, it's a fantastic finish and it was a, it started with a, a good area in terms of down that left hand side again in the wide areas Millwall and some, some good work from Fleming so they'd be very proud of, of their performance Yes, Coventry came in back into the game sort of in the, in the latter stage of that second half but they defended really well, went back into that five and was like, come on then, break us down and, and Coventry didn't really have an answer for it. An intriguing second half to come then here on your home of the EFL Talk Sport 2. Myself, Ian Danter and Courtney Sweetman Kirk back shortly. You'll hear from Mark Robbins at half-time and full second half commentary to come. But at the break, it is Coventry City nil, Millwall 1. EFL Live on TalkSport 2. Come on, Katerina. You can handle this heat. One event at a time. Throw together a decent ragu. Jump straight onto the Malaysian curry. Bring it home with the chilli. Yeah, I'll bust this batch cook. Perform better on Sundays. Get half price electricity 11 a.m. till 4 p.m. with peak save from British Gas. Proud partners of Team GB and Paralympics GB. Ends 25th of February. T's and C's apply. Smart meter required. Talk Sport 2, official broadcast partner of the Premier League and the EFL. EFL Live on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's. Fancy a Big Mac for the big match? Order McDelivery now on the McDonald's app and get tasty reward points delivered too. 18 plus. Rewards account required. Participating restaurants. Subject to availability. Delivery fees and terms apply. Grassroots football has a problem. Abuse is increasing. You know the rules. Just calm down. Hate is growing. You shouldn't play football! Ugly behaviour is ruining our beautiful game. The FA are targeting discriminatory abuse in all its forms. Points can be deducted. Players will be removed from play. Abuse will be punished. There's no space for hate or no space for you. Enough is enough. Six nations and six amazing chances to win an unforgettable adventure for you and five mates in a Six Nations European host city of your choice. 
to take part. Enter online now at greenking.co.uk slash rugby. Six nations, six mates and six international rugby getaways worth £3,000. Scrum down and sign up to win at greenking.co.uk slash rugby and watch all the Six Nations action live at your local Green King pub. Terms and conditions apply 18plusdrinkaware.co.uk At B&Q and Trade Point, get three for two on selected coloured emulsion and paint mixing. With brands like Dulux and Valspar, whatever the surface or space, we've got you covered for less. Shop in store or online. You can do it. Exclusions apply. The value of every third item per single transaction in descending price order deducted ends 26th of February. See DIY.com. Going to the shops isn't everyone's bag. Like Toby here, he'd rather nurture his plants and get everything he needs to make dinner delivered by Tesco Wush. Store to door from as little as 20 minutes. Keep reaching for the sun, Arthur. You're growing so fast, little one. Blooming lovely, aren't you? Carry on, Toby. Tesco Wush. Every little helps. Fees apply delivery times 20 to 60 minutes, selected areas. Wash specific pricing, see tesco.com slash wash. Let me count the ways I love thee. I love thy bacon, the taste so crisp. Your tomato so juicy, perfect. Oh, yes. Your smoky sauce, oh, I adore. But here does five weeks. Stay, I want more. I love you, big tasty. Big tasty, big love. Until the 12th of March from 11am, participating restaurants only, subject to availability. Early breakfast, weekday mornings from 5 on Talk Sport with Adrian Flux. Insurance for the individual. From the goal line to the golf course, the canvas to the crease. We've got all the biggest sports stories covered. Wake up to expert debate, analysis and opinion that's guaranteed to set you up for the day. Early breakfast, weekday mornings from 5 on Talk Sport with Adrian Flux. Get a tailor-made quote for your commercial vehicle. Search Adrian Flux, insurance for the individual. EFL Live on TalkSport 2. Points up for grabs for very different reasons here at the Coventry Building Society Arena. Millwall couldn't get the ball clear. Now Van Aweyts away, right-hand side of the box, pulls it back. Sakamoto, great save, Sarkic. And Hadji Wright hits the post twice on the follow-up. And somehow it stays out. And Sarkic dives on the ball gratefully. Sakamoto's initial shot was well saved. It came straight out to the American Hadji Wright. Two bites of the cherry, both off the upright. Nil-nil it stays. Yeah, I think, to be honest, Dan, both of them have got a score. Cooper stayed forward. And he's found the ball to Casper De Norris. Gone into the box. Sion Fleming in there too. And it's just driven in for a goal. Romain Esset has given Millwall the lead. Suddenly let fly with his left boot. It's a wonderful strike. And probably would say a little bit against the run of play. But I think Millwall were growing into this game. Sensational ball from Honeyman. McNamara pulls it back. Obafemi with a drive. And it's kept out. Shoveled away by Brad Collins. That would have been a quite superb counter-attacking goal from Millwall. Just those little, you know, one percents that we normally see from Coventry, especially in the final third, that they move it so quickly. It's just not quite there at the moment. Torp runs up to the ball, right footed, classes it goal, tipped over by Sarkic. Got quickly across to his right and tipped it over the bar. And the referee blows the half-time whistle and Coventry City's bid to get back into the championship top six. Has hit the buffers a little bit. It is Coventry City nil. Millwall won. So that's the situation at half-time here at the Coventry Building Society Arena. Live on TalkSport 2, Ian Danter and Courtney Sweetman Cook with you. Full second half commentary to come on Coventry against Millwall. But let's talk a bit more about Coventry and specifically their manager. Already the longest serving boss in the championship by a distance. Sky Blues manager Mark Robbins is approaching seven years in charge of the club. Now speaking exclusively to Talk Sports, Ian Abrahams on Friday, he admitted the battle for promotion to the Premier League has never been tougher. All you can do at any football club is try and improve the situation. You know, uh, Doug King's come in and he's changed things. Um, he's changed things immeasurably really. You, you know, you look at the, 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 the training facility we're studying at the moment, things are still moving forwards with that. I'm sure you've seen um, we've got a, a, a really talented bunch of players here um, and like I say hopefully we can add to that as we go and, and become stronger and stronger in depth but it all takes it all takes money it all takes that that finance and um, you know Doug's backing that and um, 
we just want to try and move it forward to where he wants it to be, where we all want it to be. You know, I think really his directive has been three, three, three out of five seasons in the in the playoffs, and, and one of those we may we may get up. Um, it's difficult to get there. You know, there's no doubt in that. You know, this season is a is a particularly difficult division, and everybody's strengthening all the time. It's it's almost a basket case of a league because everybody's trying to do the same thing. We're trying to get out, barring probably three teams, maybe, maybe two teams. We're all trying to do the same thing. Um, and I think the new teams that have come in have, have acquitted themselves pretty well. Certainly Plymouth have done fantastic well, which have been incredible. Um, and Sheffield Wednesday are a decent team. You know, they're, they're down at the bottom end of the division, but they've got some really good players in there, athletic players. So... The, the, the league improves all the time. Teams that have come down have been stronger than uh, stronger than not, and um, it makes for a difficult side. So the, the league changes six teams each season, three of which have got parachute payments all the time. Unless three go up, there's still it adds to that for a number of years, which becomes more and more difficult. So to to, to operate at the top end of the league is an ambition, and um, you know hopefully we can keep going. Mark Robbins there chatting with Talk Sports Ian Abrahams towards the end of last week about the prospects for Coventry City and whether promotion is a realistic aim. They're certainly trying to get in amongst it this afternoon, but they trail to Millwall here at half-time, live on TalkSport 2. Myself, Ian Danter and Courtney Sweetman Kirk with you. Full second-half commentary to come. Just generally on the on the championship, Courtney, when you, you look at the results yesterday, Ipswich West Brom was a fantastic encounter. We had it live on TalkSport 2 and Sean Hutch and some of the uh, a last gasp equaliser for Ipswich to save them a point and then around them Leeds made light work of Rotherham Southampton came from 2-0 down to Wallop Huddersfield to keep that unbeaten run going what, uh, what caught your eye most yesterday in the in the championship at that sort of top end the, the top end I, I do think I've been watching Southampton the run that they're going on the unbeaten run is fantastic and when they were sitting third or fourth I think it was I said I think they're the ones that will really march on um, I think they'll get the automatic which look, looks to be the case at the moment and I think when you look at the job that, that's been done there by Russell Martin and got a lot of criticism at the start of the season but had a very clear philosophy about what he wanted and what he wanted to achieve that club and the brand of football that they, they wanted to play so the fact that they're doing so well doing that um, I think you've, you've got to give him a lot of credit but I think uh, as, as Mark Robbins said there the championship it's an incredible league you never really know what you're going to get I think the quality of the teams that have have come down has made it extremely difficult to get out of and adding the fact that you know Whipswitcher are very much the outliers and um, yeah it's it's a league that everyone's trying to, to do the same thing and they're all on very different footings as well in terms of um, of the finances so look it's a great league I don't know which way the playoffs are going to go but I still stand um, by the fact that, that Leicester and Southampton will be the, the teams that go up automatically Sunderland fans are breathing a little easier seem to be a little happier they weren't sure about Michael Beale at all clearly when he when he came in mm. and some of the things he said seemed to rub some of the Sunderland faithful up the wrong way but a convincing win at the Stadium of Light against Stoke yesterday sees them back in sixth at the moment with Coventry playing just now and you've got what seven points between Sunderland in sixth and Cardiff down in 14th so I think you would take it down that far Plymouth and Millwall here 36 points if Millwall hang on that's probably too much ground to make up you would say yeah but anywhere from Cardiff up for potential for those last two playoff spots because it seems to be two spots up for grabs yeah and I think it was funny enough I was having this conversation the other day and I exactly agree with you Cardiff I think any more than that's just a little bit too far away with the points but I think you know going into now this is this is where the, I think the championship every season gets always very interesting you'll get teams that start putting a bit of a run together three or four games and next thing you know as you say you could potentially be in 12th and, and be in sixth two weeks later so that's why we love it we love the drama but I do think sort of there's as you said I, I probably think now it's two spots up for grabs so it, it in a way maybe makes it more exciting more interesting because there's there's almost less places up for grabs so the teams have, have really got to go for it sort of you know March that, that's the time it really starts to hot up and of course TalkSport 2 
your home of the EFL will bring you all the big games right the way through to the end of the season and of course all the playoff matches from Championship League 1 and League 2 all the games that will decide who goes into the Premier League and indeed who drops out of the Championship and into League 1 big performance from QPR yesterday to get a point against Norwich to keep a mini revival going under Marty Cifuentes back here at the Coventry Building Society Arena both sets of players are out no changes made at the break from either Mark Robbins or Joe Edwards so we're running through the lineups in just a second get the second half underway with Coventry in their sky blue home strip kicking towards the south stand to our right in the second half we're 20 rows back in the west stand here at the Coventry Building Society Arena Millwall in their first choice colours of the navy blue and white shorts they're kicking towards the north stand away to our right it's Collins in goal for Coventry Van A. White, Lati Bogier, Binks and De Silva at the back Torp, Eccles, Sakamoto, O'Hare, Palmer and Wright as for Millwall as we wait for kickoff Sarkic in goal Tanganga, Harding and Cooper McNamara and Bryan as wingbacks Donore and Honeyman in midfield Fleming and Esser either side of Obafemi in attack and it's Romain Esser's goal that separates the sides and Callum O'Hare restarts the match here on TalkSport 2 at the Coventry Building Society Arena and Binks immediately looks for Jada Silver on the left hand side and as with the first half, as soon as Jada Silva gets anywhere near picking up possession, suddenly Danny McNamara springs from nowhere and it's given away by Coventry at the back. Obafemi goes down at the edge of the area and the referee says no foul. He went down too cheaply for the referee's liking and Coventry bring the ball away, but Van A. White can't slide it into the path of Sakamoto. So Joe Bryan comes away with the ball. But that was bit lax in defence for Coventry City in these early stages of the second half Courtney Sweetman Kirk. Yeah, you, can, you saw it coming a mile off Dan so I'm not sure why Collins plays that ball in there or if he's got to do it he's got to play it to the back foot with tempo so you can turn on the ball but just playing into Millwall's hands really you know they're going to high press and I'm not saying it has to be long ball but you can pass the first line of the press and Collins was poor decision there. Van A. White finds Callum O'Hare, right-hand side. Sakamoto in support, drives for the byline, feints to cross, checks back onto his left and dumps Brian on the seat of his pants, plays the ball to the far post and it's flicked away by Harding. Actually, it didn't come off Harding at all. It's been given as a goal kick to Millwall. It wasn't really anywhere near anybody in a sky blue shirt, that ball into the box from Sakamoto. Goal kick, 1-0 Millwall. And I think they'll, they'll want more from Sakamoto in the second half. Coventry fans and... and Robbins is such a, a quality player and such a technical player but for me just didn't do enough in the first half the, the big opportunity obviously with the with the shot on goal but aside from that I think he, he struggled to, to get himself into the game and, and cause any problems throw into Coventry and Van Evite works it back to Binks middle midway point of his own half out to the left and De Silva has to go backwards to square to Binks once again. Lati Bogier gets his head up, slides it out to Sakamoto on the halfway line, but a poor touch from him allows Brian to win it back. Sakamoto looking to dispossess Fleming. Comes away with the ball, Sakamoto. Plays it infield, but it's nowhere near Callum O'Hare. He'll get it via a deflection. And Sakamoto stayed down after an off-the-ball incident with Joe Bryan. Now he's picking himself up. Lati Bogier has it for Coventry just inside his own half. Looks to play it down the central channel for Hadji Wright, but overhits the pass. Wright acknowledges the intention of Joel Latibodier, but it bounces twice and through to Sarkic. 1-0 Millwall. A couple of minutes gone in the second half. It's not a bad idea, though, because Cooper, he gambles, so his high is not in line with Harding at all. So it's definitely the, the right idea, just the execution on the ball wasn't good enough. Eccles tries to turn away from Honeyman on halfway. Millwall won it back. Obafemi guides it down for Fleming. He works it back into his own half. For Brian, plays it through the legs of Hadji Wright, and then Denore spots a bit of space for Tanganga to pile forward for Millwall out to the right hand side. McNamara does well to keep it in place, sprints in field, De Silva going with him, knocks it back to Honeyman in the centre of the Coventry half. To his left is Brian, back for Honeyman once again. Honeyman dispossessed by Hadji Wright, illegally so though, says the referee. Mill will have a free kick just ahead of the centre circle. Soft, really soft dance. I think Hadji Wright does well. He's come back, he's helping his team, just gets his body in the way. I really don't think that's a foul. Don't 
Don't forget the Sunday session getting underway on TalkSport right now. Regular updates on West Ham against Arsenal and then Aston Villa against Manchester United. Hugh Wilson-Croft and Perry Groves are your team on TalkSport this afternoon here on TalkSport 2. We are concentrating on matters here at the Coventry Building Society Arena. Four minutes gone in the second half. Millwall free kick. They lead by a goal to nil. It's clipped into the box. Headed out as far as Castor. But Denori and then Obafemi on the half volley as the ball dropped for him just inside the area. Couldn't keep it down. Skied it over the bar. Goal kick to Coventry. It's just a snapshot, but do well Millwall in the second phase of, of that set piece and does the right thing. Obafemi's similar to Essay earlier in terms of trying to hit it early, but just doesn't get the right connection. A couple of X1s in direct confrontation there Lati Bergier and Obafemi Lati Bergier came out of it in the nick of time and it's brought over halfway by Victor Torp out to the Coventry left and De Silva plays the ball in field O'Hare was caught from behind but no foul says the referee in fairness to O'Hare he's hopped straight back to his feet the ball's clipped up to halfway and Obafemi under pressure from Binks claims he's being held looks like he was but no foul, says the referee. Coventry coming forward. Sakamoto in the area, right-hand side. Checks onto his left, gets the shot away, and Sarkic makes the save, and then the offside flag goes up against Hadji Wright, trying to follow up. And Sakamoto has another effort denied by Matthias Sarkic, this time early in the second half. 1-0 Millwall. I'll tell you what, if that had gone in, I think the Millwall players and, and manager alike would have been absolutely livid, because for me, that's a blatant foul on Obafemi there his arm you can see is being pulled back by Binks I think it was and just a, we always talk about refereeing and we talk about the consistency and I just think now that's starting to change a little bit in this second half there's a lack of consistency with the with the um, with the decisions that are being made Sarkic to take the free kick for that offside clips it up to the halfway line Fleming and Van A. White in direct opposition and Brian comes away for the ball for Millwall, wax it against Eccles and wins a corner for Millwall. Away on this left-hand side. It's their second corner of the game, Millwall. Brilliant from Zeon Fleming, though, holding that ball up, making sure he's strong, getting his body in between the ball and the defender, and then the little flick round the corner as well for Brian was really nice. And George Honeyman has gone to collect a ball off one of the cones and then realises that the ball's already been placed next to the quadrant. Coventry fans saying that's a bit of time wasting deliberately so from Honeyman but it's going to be a right footed in swinger at the northwest corner of the Coventry Building Society arena just down to our left Honeyman right footed clips the ball deep to the far post goes beyond everybody one bounce and over the dead ball line I think Zion Fleming was the intended target but Honeyman holds his arms out in disbelief that he got that wrong. Goal kick to Coventry. Coventry nil, Millwall one on TalkSport 2. It was a big sweeping run, run, wasn't it, by Fleming. Started at the front and then trying to sweep all the way round to the back, but I don't think he set off in time. But I think it's a, a good area where the ball landed if someone can head that back across. Collins with the goal kick downfield for Coventry. Headed back towards halfway by Tanganga. O'Hare cushions a header down for De Silva. O'Hare has it back, just over the halfway line, hugging that far left-hand touch line. Torp works it infield to Eccles, has to guard it back into his own half for Binks, keeps it away from Esser, and then Torp, in trying to find Callum O'Hare, steered the ball straight out of play for a Millwall throw. There's quite a few substitutes been warming up down beneath us. I wonder whether Mark Robbins is tempted to make a change. Matt Godden is one of those getting changed. We'll wait and see. We've played seven minutes of the second period. Coventry City nil, Millwall one. If you're just tuning into EFL Championship live here on Talksport two, balls bouncing towards the Coventry penalty area. Obafemi giving chase. Van A. White gets there first. Lati Bogier neatly chips it around Obafemi to buy himself some space. Rolls it down the left hand side for Torp, and then Torp has the ball hit against him by Matt Namara. Assistant on that far side has given a throw to Millwall. You can hear what the locals think about that. Yeah, they're not overly impressed. They can see better over that side than us, but I just think as well there's just a, a big amount of frustration from what they've seen from their side already. They've had some good opportunities that they've not been clinical enough with, but on balance, Millwall have, have really taken this game to Coventry. Long throw to come then from Jaffet Tanganga for Millwall. Level with the edge of the Coventry penalty area. Slings it into the near post. Strong header clear by Binks. O'Hare... He's herring after it, but won't get there. 
It's back instead at the back for Millwall. Swung into the box, but there were at least two players who couldn't make a run for it in case they were caught offside. And Collins bowls the ball out over arm, bounces over the leg of Van Awey and over the head of Sakamoto, and Millwall have a throw. That sums up, I think, Coventry today so far, trying to do the right things, but the, the quality on the ball just hasn't been good enough all over the pitch throw into Millwall Casper Denori works it back to Wes Harding Tanganga just to his right hits the ball against Casey Palmer Honeyman will head it towards halfway but it's back in Coventry's possession with Victor Torp Torp looks for O'Hare inside left position works it in field to Casey Palmer quick feet from Palmer but then Harding steps in and toe pokes the ball clear Esse tries to turn but he's dispossessed by De Silva Coventry just trying to hem Millwall in here in their own defensive third Eccles just over the halfway line finds Callum O'Hare out to the Coventry left and Jay De Silva Torps made a running to the box De Silva trying to find him he's going to deflect behind for a corner is it? it is first corner of the second half to Coventry City at the south stand end but they trail Millwall by a goal to nil here Torp is going to take it in that southeast corner. Right footed in swinger to come, pack six yard box. Saw very sparsely populated six yard boxes for corners in the first half, but there's loads in there surrounding Matthias Sarkic in both sky blue and navy blue. Torp sends in the corner under the crossbar, headed up and out by Zion Fleming right in front of his goalkeeper. Denori heads it further clear. But Torp will get to the loose ball first. Casey Palmer, just head of the centre circle, rides the challenge of Denori. Now it's taken by Josh Eccles. Eccles slides it down the left-hand side. Torp for the first time. Cross might drop for Casey Palmer. Cleared away by Denori. Under pressure. Goes out for a throw. Right-hand side for Coventry. And they're preparing a double change here, Coventry. Bobby Thomas and Ellis Sims will be on shortly. They're both stripped and ready. Ball's out for a throw. Is this when they decide to make the change indeed it is and the players coming off Josh Eccles is making way for Bobby Thomas so they're going to have three centre halves out there and Casey Palmer is coming off for Ellis Sims I wonder whether they're going to go like for like against Millwall with their system Courtney yeah. Sweetman Kirk I would imagine so but I think Casey Palmer will feel disappointed with that to be honest because I think he's probably been one of the better players for Coventry in this game but maybe it is due to that formation and feeling that that is the best way to, to try and match Millwall up so Bobby Thomas Ellis Sims on Josh Eccles Casey Palmer off Coventry have just won a corner as Van Ewart just hit the ball against Casper Denari on this right hand side and it will be Victor Torp coming across to the right-hand side to strike the corner in for Coventry this time. So a bit more height in the box now, courtesy of Bobby Thomas in there for Coventry City. 1-0 to Millwall. Just over 10 minutes gone in the second half. Torp floats the ball to the far post. Sims went up for it, but Sarkic got something on it with his right glove and got it half clear. O'Hare picks up the loose ball for Coventry out of the left-hand side. Jada Silva, quite deep, works it out to the far left-hand side. Binks is out there, puts in a ball with his left, headed out by Jake Cooper for Millwall. Straight back to Binks. He nods it back to the corner of the area, but that was straight down George Honeyman's throat. And now Obafemi's giving chase. Van Avijk gets in front of him and rolls it back to his goalkeeper, Brad Collins. Collins will look for Binks. Now up to the halfway line, O'Hare and De Silva combined. Torp, little wedge, pitching wedge down the left-hand side of the box, but it's overhit in the end. I think it was intended for O'Hare, but Sarkic comes out to collect. Is it a back three? I'm not sure that it... it yeah, it is. It, Laddie Bergier, right, Thomas middle, Binks left yeah. for Coventry. Sakamoto now playing as a, as a wing-back, as is De Silva. Back it goes to Brad Collins. Passes out to the centre of his own half, Torp. Has space to turn. Now Denoris closing down the space. De Silva works it infield to Lati Bogier. Works it out to this near side via a deflection to Van Avijk. Sakamoto calling for it on this near touchline. Midway point of the Millwall half. Skips in field the Japanese. 
finds Lati Bodier getting towards the edge of the area. Almost thought about shooting there, I think. Joel Lati Bodier. Instead, it's De Silva and Wright combining. Out on the left-hand side for Coventry. Lati Bodier wants it back in the centre of the half. Into the feet of O'Hare. Little flick round the corner, trying to get Torp in behind, but Honeyman intercepts. And then Zion Fleming plays a long ball up to halfway. Can't find Obafemi. Thomas finds O'Hare, tries to cushion a header down for Van Awijk, but Mill will have won it back. And then Fleming hits the ball against Van Awijk, having lost control of the ball. It's quite clever from Zion Fleming to win a throw right in front of his manager. 59 minutes gone on TalkSport 2. It's Coventry 0, Millwall 1. It's interesting this because you know that Coventry have got to flood bodies forward. They've tweaked it, but the balance is so off. And I think if Millwall can win the ball back quickly on transition and find a, a navy blue shirt, Coventry are going to be sort in all sorts of trouble. Super Bowl 58 tonight on Talk Sport from 10.30. Once we're done here at the Coventry Building Society Arena, you can hear all of our Road to the Super Bowl special shows that we brought you across the week here on Talk Sport 2 from 2pm 2 through to 6pm with... Will Gavin and our team out in Las Vegas. Nat Coombs will be your presenter on Talk Sport tonight from 10.30. For the Kansas City Chiefs against the San Francisco 49ers, Will Gavin and Jeff Reinbold will be your commentary team inside the Alley Giant Stadium. And they'll be on Taylor Swift watch, <laughs> I'm sure. Here's Lati Bogier for Coventry City, trailing by Galton. Hill. Sun trying to break through here at the Coventry Building Society Arena for the first time this afternoon. Binks picks up possession for the Sky Blues just ahead of the halfway line. Victor Torp now. Out to the left wing and Jada Silva. O'Hare out there with him. Gives it back to the number three, Jada Silva. Looking to step away from Tanganga. Good quick feet. Now Callum O'Hare, left hand corner of the box. Rolls it into Hachi right. Trying to make space for a shot. Blocks. Torp with a right footed effort wide and it's deflected wide for a corner kick to Coventry City. They're coming close again to try and get get back on terms brilliant pacey ball into Hadji right but he can't quite fashion half a yard to get the shot off Torp does the right thing there he knows that he's got to try and bend it round the defenders into the back of the net but the deflection takes it out for the corner in the end it's going to be Tom Bradshaw and Duncan Watmore on in a moment for Millwall for a double attacking change meantime Torp with the corner for Coventry again it's deep to the far post again Sarkic comes and he claims in the end I thought he'd lost control for a moment as he fell from the sky, but he managed to keep both gloves on the ball. And it remains Coventry nil, Millwall 1. And when the ball next goes out of play, Joe Edwards is making a double change for the visitors. Does well in the end, Sarkic there, doesn't he? But there's been two opportunities there from the corner where he's come a very long way. And you feel if he doesn't get one, it's going to be a, an open goal for Coventry to try and put the ball in the net. Ball's out of play. So here comes that double change for Millwall. So Tom Bradshaw, four goals this season in the championship, and Duncan Watmore, who scored one against Hull in October. And uh, Esser, the goal scorer, is coming off. More good experience for him. And Obafemi, so it's fairly obvious changes, isn't it, Courtney? Bradshaw and Watmore into those places that Essa and Obafemi were already occupying. Yeah, and what I will say about Joe Edwards today and Millwall is they've been brave, really brave with how they've set up, how they've got high, they've got the wing back high, they've got bodies there. And with these substitutions, they could quite easily, you know, pack up the midfielders or bring another defender on and, and drop one of the forward players back but they're not they're going for it and I've, I've got to give Joe Edwards a lot of credit for that throw for Coventry in their right back position 62 minutes gone on Talksport 2 Coventry nil, Millwall 1 Fanny White gets the ball back from O'Hare elects to roll the ball back to Binks Thomas just to his right the right hand corner of the area lofts it up to halfway chested down by Brian Denari flicks it on but it won't find what more Torp good strength from him and O'Hare brings the ball away and slides in Hadji Wright into the area left-hand side for Coventry. Check it on to his right, but Hadji Wright can't get the shot away. It's cleared away by Millwall. Only as far as Thomas, up to O'Hare with his bat to goal 25 yards out. Now Lati Bogier finds Van Avey. Lati Bogier again. 
up to O'Hare, turns it round the corner for Ellis Sims, it won't hold for Ellis Sims, and then away come Millwall, and a foul on Watmore. Gives the London Lions a free kick inside their own half, and they still lead by a goal to nil. That is excellent centre-forward play there by Watmore. They know that they've been under pressure, he gets the ball, he could quite easily just try and punt it upfield, but he draws the foul and just gives Millwall a few precious seconds to calm down. But in there for Coventry, I think Hadji Wright, again, and it's not just him, but the wrong decisions have been made for a lot of this game for Coventry. He's either got to take the touch and shoot earlier, or if he's going to take as many touches as he did, he's got to try and find a teammate and just drive it across the box. So Millwall's free kick to be taken by Sarkic, their goalkeeper. Right down the middle of the field, up to the edge of the area, bounces through to Brad Collins. And Collins being urged by home fans to get rid of the ball and he threw it out but straight onto the head of Zion Fleming now Bradshaw tries to give it back to Fleming as he moved in field clearance by Latibodier will drop for Danny McNamara and the Millwall right wing back guides it back to the tall rangy Jake Cooper tried to thread it up to Bradshaw but the ball went through Bradshaw's legs and Collins looks for Jada Silva almost sold him short with that pass and Corny Sweet with Kirk <laughs> alongside with just screwing the face up at what almost happened to Jada Silva getting dispossessed by Watmore. Yeah, and, and Collins in general today, unfortunately for, for him, I've got to say that his distribution has, has been really, really poor and that's another example of it in terms of just about getting away with one. Commentary in possession just inside the Millwall half. 1-0 Millwall lead with 25 minutes to go on Talk Sport 2 here at the Coventry Building Society Arena. Hadji Wright, left-hand side. O'Hare flicks it in field for Victor Torp. Back into the area. Hadji Wright spins, goes down under pressure. Penalty kick. Tanganga brought down Hadji Wright as he spun inside the area to make room for a shot. Tanganga brought him down. It's a penalty kick to the Sky Blues. Yeah, and I thought it was a penalty dance. And what Hadji Wright does so well here is he uses his body. It was a incident in the first half where it's similar the ball comes into him and Honeyman just nips in front of him but this time he does really well he gets his body across and makes sure he knows he's protecting the ball because he knows if Tanganga comes through him like he did there it's a penalty it's good play from the centre forward Hachi Wright has demanded the ball Callum O'Hare is having a chat with him I think he wants to take the penalty yeah and he's walking away a bit disconsolate Callum O'Hare because Hachi Wright the top scorer has decided this is mine and he will take it for Coventry City he's just doing a bit of gardening around the penalty spot before he takes the strike well let's see whether this works out for Hadji Wright stands at the edge of the penalty area to try and bring Coventry City level up against Sarkic slow run up to the ball right footed sends Sarkic the wrong way goes down the centre of the goal and Hadji Wright has equalised for Coventry City to set up a grandstand last quarter of this championship encounter. Coventry won, Millwall won. Well, it's a good penalty dance and look at the celebrators there. He's enjoying himself, trying to G the crowd up. It's a long run up, takes his time, stutters on the way up, but then sends Sarkic the wrong way and is quite happy just to side foot it to the opposite side. And no doubt in my mind that that was a penalty and I think now it's going to be really interesting to see what Millwall do here. Do they try and settle for the draw and, and get bodies behind the ball or do they go at Coventry again like they did in the first half? I'm not sure that that isn't Coventry's first penalty in the championship this season maybe that's why Callum O'Hare was looking <laughs> a bit disconsolate that he didn't get the nod because they just don't know who the penalty taker is <laughs> anyway 1-1, quarter of the game to go on Talk Sport 2 they made that double change Coventry it's not necessarily the double change that's made the difference but Hadji Wright won the penalty and has scored the penalty but Millwall have just won a free kick 20 yards inside the Coventry half of the field can the visitors come again they've caused enough problems so far this afternoon for the Coventry back line Joe Bryan standing over this free kick to the left of centre just in front of our commentary position left footed clips the ball up to the edge of the box it's flicked away by Thomas for commentary only as far as Watmore back for Honeyman Honeyman hits it against Ellis Sims who handled the ball so it's a free kick to Millwall now on the right hand side the midway point of the Coventry half and the Sun desperate to break through here in the Midlands but not quite 1-1 not 
It's interesting that one dance. It is handball, but it's so close to Ellis Sims, I'm not really sure how we can get out of the way quickly enough when it's a couple of yards away from him. If that had been in the box, would it have been a penalty? Well, for some of the decisions I saw yesterday in the Luton uh, the Sheffield <laughs> United game, then yes, definitely. But less said about that, the better. Well, we are in a VAR free zone. Let's not forget here in the EFL. Millwall's free kick and it sent it just beyond the despairing dive of Jake Cooper that was a lovely delivery from the right hand side and Cooper was well placed right in front of goal but it, the ball was just a yard or so ahead of him 24,168 here in the Coventry Building Society arena and I'm told that Coventry already have had a penalty this season that Matt Godden took not sure that he scored it though Here's Callum O'Hare as Coventry suddenly bursts forward, rights in space inside the area. Hadji Wright! It's in! Went through Sarkic! What a turnaround at the Coventry Building Society Arena! Hadji Wright scores twice to get to double figures for the season, but Matthias Sarkic will be disappointed with that. O'Hare with a bursting run through the middle, fed it left-hand side of the box. Hadji Wright took aim, went for the bottom corner, but Sarkic did not keep it out, and he looks despairingly at his defenders. He feels he's let them down. What a transformation in the atmosphere. Coventry going back to the top six as things stand. Coventry two, Millwall one. Just as the, the sun comes out as well, Dance, it's like it was meant to happen, but... No, I think the six of one and a half does up here in terms of the defence was terrible, quite frankly. Callum O'Hare has got the freedom of Coventry running through the middle of this pitch. You know, it's a good ball out wide. It's unselfish, by the way. You think he can go himself. He doesn't. Plays it to his left-hand side. And Hadji right, he doesn't catch this right at all. Excuse the pun. It wasn't meant to be one. And as you say, Sarkic, he's, he's got to do better there at his near post. It's really poor from the goalkeeper. Coventry 2, Millwall 1, 20 minutes to go on Talk Sport 2. Bobby Thomas clatters the ball against Bradshaw and it lands in amongst the supporters just to our right in the West Stand. Now they're singing loud and proud all around us here. Millwall fans over to our right in the South Stand, standing silent. They had this game under control for long spells but two goals in three minutes I've seen Coventry in front O'Hare just limping a little holding his left calf after going in for a challenge play up Sky Blues being sung around this arena as Sims wins the ball back O'Hare clips the ball out to Hadji Wright who's on a hat-trick now he's on the left wing at the moment O'Hare's still out there with him Right, holding up Honeyman. Oh, lovely turn, drop of the shoulder. Works it back to Victor Torp. Torp inside the area, gets the shot away, deflects over the bar for another corner kick to Coventry City. So close to 3-1. It's incredible how this game has flipped on its head within five minutes, but I think Hadji Wright now, it's Sims that's playing down the middle and Hadji Wright more so on the left, and I think that's just opened <laughs> the game up a little bit. It's made it a, a lot better, I think, for Hadji Wright to be able to, to get on the ball and, and have more of an impact. That was only just deflected over the bar by the thigh of Jaffet Tanganga for Millwall. So a corner for Coventry in the southeast corner to be taken once again by Victor Torp. And it comes to the near post. Flicks on by Thomas and it's wide. Goal kick to Millwall. Stays 2-1 on Talksport 2. Sun finally breaking through here in the Midlands. And Millwall have 18 minutes to do something about this scoreline. Clip forward towards the halfway line. Two Coventry players go for the same ball in Binks and Lati Bogier. The ball's gone out of play and Coventry have been awarded a throw. It's all going the Sky Blues way at the moment. It is, and I think sometimes we, it's one of those football cliches, isn't it? But look, Coventry have been nowhere near their best today, but they're finding a way to score goals to get back into the game. and. That's a, that's a very good habit to have. Does Mark Robbins wish they would have played better? Of course he does. Oh, right. Sarkic going after a ball and he claims it in the end. It, it was high, looped into the box from the left-hand side. Sakamoto was trying to put him under pressure. Sarkic dropped it initially, but Sakamoto didn't know where the ball was. If he'd had any inkling 
where the ball was Tatsuhiro Sakamoto then he would have had an empty net to aim at well like I said didn't I there's a couple of times he's come from the corners and looked suspect that one's slightly different in open play but I think he's probably still thinking about that that shot from Hadji Wright he should have saved as well and he does look nervous Coventry 2 Millwall 1 on TalkSport 2 17 minutes to go McNamara works it back for Honeyman Honeyman sends the cross into the box down goes Fleming Bradshaw was in there too Fleming look at the referee saying I was fouled but referee Kitching says nothing doing and Coventry City get a goal kick Paulie Sweetman Kirk alongside me this afternoon he's made those two changes Joe Edwards and, and refreshed the front line and he'll be hoping that one of those two can actually have an effect on the game Bradshaw and Watmore they've not really got into the game quite yet have they yeah, and I think it's because not necessarily down to them but don't know what it is whether it's the momentum turning or the fitness of, of Brian and McNamara or not necessarily the fitness but it's such a hard job that they were doing staying high getting down them wing back areas and I think because they've not been as high in this second half that has allowed Coventry back into the game O'Hare lays the ball off to Van Avey down this right hand side for Coventry cuts in field up to the edge of the area Tatsuhiro Sakamoto and O'Hare combine O'Hare went down he wants a free kick referee says no play on and Joe Bryan scrapping for possession with Sakamoto down by his own corner flag and Sakamoto pushes Bryan over free kick to Millwall quarter of an hour to go on talk sport two here at the Coventry Building Society Arena you're listening to Coventry two Millwall one in the EFL Championship on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's order McDelivery on the McDonald's app and get tasty rewards points 18 plus terms and conditions apply long goal kick downfield free kick downfield from Sarkic but it just drifts out of play it's happened a couple of times for Sarkic this afternoon and Coventry get a throw just shy of the halfway line on this near side to us the Coventry right Van Avey O'Hare has come short the throw in may go a little longer he's holding on to the ball for a while Van A. White eventually he gets it back into play but Sims is dispossessed and Brian rolls the ball back to Sarkic once more gets it out of his feet clears it right footed downfield but Bobby Thomas heads it up to halfway but there was a Millwall player onto it straight away and George Honeyman Donare dispossessed by good strength by Van A. White Sakamoto lobs it into the Millwall half of the field Sims got his head to it but couldn't find his teammate right and instead McNamara guides it back to Tanganga who gave away the penalty that saw Coventry equalise through Hadji Wright on 67 and then right again on 70 and that through ball from Zion Fleming is asking rather too much of Tom Bradshaw but there is another change being readied and uh, George Saville is going to come on for George Honeyman so the two Georges swap 30 years of age now George Saville returned to Millwall three years ago he originally left for Middlesbrough back in 2018 tall rangy midfield player be useful at set pieces if Millwall try and win corners and free kicks late on in the game different player to Honeyman entirely Courtney Sweetman Kirk yeah and Honeyman's ran himself ragged today I don't think there's anything more that he could have done for the team and that's what all a manager will ask of you even if they have to bring you off just give everything you can for while you're on the pitch and then there's players that can come on and replace you we'll clear the way up to halfway Danny Mayer's on as well um, Adam Mayer on rather on the way for Millwall meantime it's brought away by Jada Silva down the left hand side O'Hare will just tuck it back to the halfway line turned by Victor Torp O'Hare still on the halfway line clips it in field to Lati Bogier to Silva spots Thomas in a bit of space now Van Avijk on this near side the Coventry right chips the ball into the area headed on by Lati Bogier who's got forward Sakamoto tries a half volley and it drifted to the far post where Hadji Wright had a go but he got underneath the header incidentally it's Zion Fleming that went off to allow Adam Mayer to come on for Millwall so we're heading into the last 12 minutes of normal time and it is 2-1 to Coventry City Coventry look totally in control but 
And Millwall, it's only one goal to draw level, but I feel like just maybe the attitude, the, the body language of the players, that I think they were so disappointed and sort of shocked to concede two goals in quick succession. They've struggled to, to get themselves back into this game and have a belief that that they can do so. Adam Mayer just arrived at Millwall from Morecambe where he made his breakthrough over the past couple of years. Left winger usually. He's playing on the left-hand side of the front three, it seems now, for Millwall. Out on the right-hand side, Donore for Millwall, trying to get back into this game. They've been in front, now they're behind. Bit of space for Joe Bryan on this left-hand side, level with the Coventry penalty area. Swings across in, and it's put behind for a corner kick by Milan Van Avey. So a corner to Millwall at the north stand end. That's the right idea in terms of the player, but that ball needs to split the wide player and the, and the outside fullback there, and then Bryan can run onto that in the box. So Joe Bryan with the resulting left-footed outswinging corner just down to our left-hand side for Millwall, who trail by two goals to one. In it comes from Bryan. Up go the heads. It will drop on the penalty spot. And Denore tried to get the shot away but the referee had spotted a push I think on Hadji Wright inside the box and Coventry will have a free kick and can get the ball clear Coventry 2 Millwall 1 we're heading towards the last 10 minutes of normal time here on Talk Sport 2 don't forget from 2pm you can listen back here on 2 to our Road to the Super Bowl specials that we've been bringing you all week live from Las Vegas on Radio Row with Will Gavin and the team with some brilliant special guests they were chatting with um, Thierry Henry Michael Richards and Kate Abdo towards the end of last week who were out there for the Super Bowl and the Super Bowl itself live on Talk Sport tonight from 10.30 the Kansas City Chiefs against the San Francisco 49ers in Las Vegas now here's Millwall in possession at the edge of their own penalty area with Jake Cooper Hits it high into the sky, drops on the halfway line. Mayer's trying to get the better of Van Awey. Denore runs into trouble in the shape of Lati Bogier. Saville tries to win the ball back. He's been dispossessed. Here goes Callum O'Hare again. Trotting towards the edge of the area. Again, he feeds Hadji Wright. Left-hand side of the box. Wright gets to the byline, pulls it back onto the chest of Sarkic to the near post. O'Hare retrieves the loose ball, running out of the penalty area. Can he keep possession? No, he went to... He fell, he slipped. And that allowed Millwall to win the ball back and it's played up to halfway but what more can't get a piece of it and Binks just hoofs it down the left hand side but that'll bounce over Hadji Wright and behind for a Millwall goal kick 2-1 Coventry nine minutes to go what a difference in this second half for Callum O'Hare he could barely breathe in the first half without a Millwall player being near him but I think that's the third time now that he's been able to pick the ball up on the turn and have green space to, to drive into and not be chased down by two or three Millwall players Back it goes from uh, Saville to his goalkeeper, Sarkic. Jake Cooper now has it, left-hand side of his own penalty area. Hits a long diagonal ball, seeking out Tom Bradshaw. Bombay Thomas heads it down. Lati Bogier gets there ahead of his man. Toe pokes it back to Van White. Good persistence from Joel Lati Bogier. And Torp will guide it down to De Silva. Eight minutes to go. Thomas finds Van White on halfway. Sakamoto calling for it down the line. Picks it up, trying to roll his defender and uh, fouled him as he tried to do it as far as referee Kitching was concerned. Millwall's free kick. Joe Bryant will take it. Sarkic showed an interest at first, but it's very tight to this near touch line. Goalkeeper gets that wrong. I oh, know he is going to take it. I'm always wary when goalkeepers take free kicks from so far wide whether it's left or right if they don't get it correct there's a mm. more than a quick jog back to his own goal line Sarkic though will deliver it right footed into the air into the centre of the half flicked on looking for Bradshaw to get a piece of it but it will bobble through to Brad Collins who will clutch hold of that ball gratefully and seconds tick away seven minutes of normal time to go on your home with the EFL Millwall back in action against Ipswich on Wednesday, live on TalkSport 2. Swansea leads on Tuesday night, live on your home with the EFL. Now, right-hand side, chance for 
What more to get forward for Millwall? Up against Binks, just holds his run for a moment. Played in to Savile. Savile gets his head up and plays the ball across the line to Jake Cooper, coming forward from halfway. Sims comes across to close him down. He still manages to find Joe Bryant. Now Mayer trying to turn away from Van White. Good challenge by Milan Van White. Out to play it goes for a Millwall throw. Ten yards from the corner flag and Tanganga's going to come across and launch another long throw into the commentary box. 2-1 cough. Yeah, they're going to load the box and they know now Millwall opportunities will be coming at a premium in these last few minutes and they need to do everything they can to try and get the equaliser. Tanganga's throw, headed out of the box by Ellis Sims, but Tanganga will get to the loose ball first. He looks to roll it back into his own half for Sarkic. Sarkic near the centre circle, chips the ball up into the centre of the commentary half. Bradshaw flicks it on, it won't break for Watmore. Volleyed clear by De Silva to nobody in particular and it will bounce out of play for a throw. Murray Wallace is doing a fairly strenuous warm-up for Millwall down beneath this maybe he's one last aerial threat that could be brought on for these last few minutes for Millwall but we're heading down towards the last five of normal time Collins sends the ball downfield Sarkic rather sends the ball downfield for Millwall Adam Mayer down the left-hand side good early cross into the box over the head of Watmore De Silva flicks it away but McNamara picks up the loose ball down the right-hand side of the Coventry penalty area for Millwall Laid infield to Tanganga. Let's the ball run across his body to protect it from O'Hare. Cooper finds Joe Bryan up to the edge of the area for Mayer. Good skill from Adam Mayer. Can he whip across in? He can. To the far post. It's headed up in the air by Binks. Bradshaw won't get there. Collins just palms the ball away from McNamara and clutches hold of the loose ball as it bobbled out to the left-hand side of the box. 2-1 Coventry. Collins as well in the end there. And I think Mayer has been a couple of opportunities down this left-hand side that... He's done really well to fashion opportunity to get the ball in the box, but for me, there's not enough Millwall players in there. There's, there's one or two, but I think if you want to try and get yourself back into the game, yes, you might concede, but you're losing anyway. So would you rather not try and get the equaliser and potentially you know, go 2-2 two, two or, or lose 3-1? It's just strange that there's a, a lack of bodies getting forward. Harding forced to clear his lines on the spin under pressure from Ellis Sims, and he could only shank it into the Coventry fans in that far side of the east stand here four minutes to go Coventry 2 Millwall 1 on TalkSport 2 plus whatever the referee wants to add on for stoppages and substitutions in this second half ball's trickled over the dead ball line for a Millwall goal kick Sarkic obviously in a hurry to get play restarted away to our right hand side Cooper's now gone up basically to join the centre forwards for an extra aerial target for these goal kicks so there is a bit more of a gamble from Joe Edwards and Millwall now Cooper is the target for that goal kick but it's headed away by Thomas Tanganga heads it over the halfway line but it's picked up by Torp for Coventry trying to release Hadji right down the left hand side Tanganga's gone out there with him Tanganga slides in and can't prevent the corner to Coventry City down their left hand side and it will be Victor Torp to go across to take it. Coventry 2, Millwall 1. I'm surprised the referee didn't give that as a foul. Yes, Hadji Wright does well chasing back Tanganga, but they looked like there was a, an arm on the shoulder to me. But a corner it is. Victor Torp has gone across to that southeast corner. A few Coventry players jostling for position around the penalty spot. Wright's in there, Lati Bergier and Binks all around the penalty spot. Torp right-footed in-swinger right to the crossbar again off the back of a Coventry defender I think it was Bobby Thomas who tried to get the contact and the attempted clearance from Joe Bryan that is shanked as well into this near stand for another Coventry throw this time on their right-hand side two and a half minutes of normal time to go Coventry hanging on and going back into the playoff places as things stand the yeah, goal difference was always going to be better then Sunderland they started with a a plus 12 goal difference Sunderland's was plus 10 after their good win against Stoke yesterday Coventry trying to win the ball just inside the Millwall half well played by Bobby Thomas to shield the ball from Mayer and then Joe Bryan with a little nibble at Sakamoto gives 
Coventry a free kick and they've got the ball exactly where they want it Courtney Sweetman Kirk yeah exactly and it's just about these final minutes now the game management not doing anything too silly with the ball just getting that quality right on the ball to keep it and drawing challenges like that yeah this time Savile just clipping Callum O'Hare as he tried to spin midway point of the Millwall half Coventry have worked it back to Thomas and indeed all the way back to Collins right footy clearance from the Coventry keeper looking for Hadji Wright uh, just evaded the American and goes out of play for a Millwall throw heading towards the last minute of normal time on TalkSport 2 Coventry have that precious 2-1 advantage having come from behind here what have Millwall got left in their bid to arrest this run of five games without a win in all competitions their last win was New Year's Day at Bristol City. Looking at what they've got next. Ipswich to come Wednesday night on TalkSport 2, then home to Sheffield Wednesday. That looms large as what could be a relegation encounter on Saturday. Then they go away to Southampton, Millwall, home to Watford, away at Blackburn and home to Birmingham, whereas... Coventry away at Plymouth next and then another away trip to Stoke home to Preston and then the FA Cup tie here on a Monday night against Maidstone United which will be live on the TalkSport network but we're heading round towards added time fourth official lead doughty is about to hold up the board and it's three minutes that we're into now three minutes of minimum added time for Coventry to hang on for Millwall to try and find an equaliser Savile plays the ball up to halfway Mayer with a light touch and he caught Van Eweyck on the follow up and it's a free kick to Coventry and Van Eweyck has stayed down yeah he did I think he's trying to argue in that he gets the ball but he comes straight through the back of the player before he does so Van Eweyck is not going to require any treatment so he is going to get back to his feet and move away awkwardly. And Victor Torp will have the free kick eventually. So nearly a minute of that minimum three has already elapsed. Commentary edging closer to three more points. And it is only one defeat in 14 for Coventry in that defeat at Norwich. They are asking lots of questions of those around them in that race for a place in the playoffs home form as well is really propping them up it's important it always is to to accrue those points at home and try and make it a fortress and they're certainly doing that this season yeah as we mentioned only West Bromwich Albion have come away from the Coventry Building Society Arena with all three points now a foul on George Savile by Callum O'Hare gives Millwall a chance to work the ball into the box not done here yet by any stretch Millwall will load the penalty area here. The free kick is about 15 yards inside the Coventry half of the field to the left of centre. Savile and Bryant are the two players standing over it. And Coventry really trying to hold as high a line as they possibly can. So they're not right on top of their goalkeeper. They're about 25 yards out the, the line of sky blue shirts. As Bryan stands over the free kick. Watmore's moved away. Savile's moved away. So Joe Bryan with this left-footed delivery for Millwall into the box. A couple of Coventry players have gone down. Ellis Sims heads it half clear, headed back into the box. Savile heads it up in the air. Where's that going to break? Jada Silva can't find it. Watmore goes down inside the area. No foul. Cleared away hurriedly by Coventry, but only at the expense of a throw. Last minute of added time. Chang Tanganga's going to send another long, long throw into the Coventry box to try and get an equaliser. In it comes from Tanganga, into the near post, Harding can't get the flick on. McNamara darts down the right-hand side of the area, gets the crossing, cleared away by Lati Baudier. All hands to the pump for Coventry City to hold on to this scoreline. Savile, just over the halfway line, hits a diagonal ball up to the edge of the area, flicked on by Harding. Sakamoto heads clear for Coventry, drops in the centre of the half. Sakamoto again, nods it over halfway. Back goes Bryan to retrieve it. The three minutes 
are up and the referee blows the full-time whistle and Coventry City are back in the championship top six and they've come from behind to beat Millwall by two goals to one. A double from Hadji Wright, two goals in three minutes, midway point of the second half settled it. Romain Esse had given Millwall an early lead in the first half and Millwall deserved that lead at the break but Coventry kept on trying, kept on scheming, kept on finding ways to hem Millwall in. They made a couple of changes. Hadji Wright shifted to the left-hand side of the front line and it's his day in the end, Courtney Sweetman Kirk. He makes it 10 for the season and Coventry are back in the playoff places. Yeah, it was by no means a vintage Coventry performance and that was due to Millwall being fantastic in the first half, the way that they set up and got their wing backs really high and just smothered Coventry, didn't allow them to get into the game. But as you mentioned, Dan, that change there, I thought Casey Palmer was unlucky to come off the pitch, to be honest, because he played well. But the fact that Hadji Wright went out on that left-hand side, it just gave him a bit more opportunity to to get on the ball he did really well with the way that he won the penalty because Tanganga had to come through the back of him his body positioning was absolutely fantastic I think Sarkic will be really disappointed with the second Coventry goal he, he has to save it it's as simple as that but the fact that that movement um, of Callum O'Hare as well he was hardly in the game in the first half because of the way that he was marked but again in that second half he was managed to get on the ball managed to be influential play the balls through to Hadji Wright and, and in the end Coventry find a way to win and that's a very very good habit to have and for Hadji Wright who's had a, a strange start you know he, he was the, the man brought in with a, a lot of the money that was recouped for the sale of Victor Giocares and he's now finding some form it wasn't the most convincing of finishes that won it as you say Sarkic will say he should have done better been beaten at his near post but for Hadji Wright he must be feeling so much better about life now as a Coventry striker got to double figures and he's con contributing an awful lot to this Sky Blue side yeah I mean big big boots to fill Jokeres both literally <laughs> um, yeah and, and figuratively and figuratively but look you're getting double figures for a season for a striker that's always important yes he'll be disappointed with the, the opportunity he missed early on in the game but the fact that he's gone on he's been confident he's took it on himself to go right actually I'm taking the penalty I'm the man that, that wants to step up and do that I've got the confidence to do it then to get the second goal look sometimes they roll in sometimes it's a keeper's mistake sometimes they come off the side of your face or sometimes you rifle one in the top corner but at the end of the day that doesn't matter at the end of the game at the end of the season he doesn't say how you've scored the goal it just has your name and the time you've scored it so that's important for his confidence and he now needs to take that going forward so Coventry back into sixth in the championship Millwall will they stay 18th only four points clear of the drop zone and they will take on Ipswich next on Wednesday night what of Joe Edwards what will he have felt about this performance there's lots to recommend in what we've seen from Millwall this afternoon even if they have been beaten yeah I think there's he'll be very very happy with the first half it's, it's we've mentioned how difficult it is here to come to CBS Arena um, and, and try and win, beat Coventry in the first half they were excellent and the game plan was quality George Honeyman by the way I think he was brilliant in the first half and the way that the wing backs got high but they struggled to to repeat that in the second half was it a little bit of confidence maybe it's even fitness because it look it takes a lot to press and be aggressive the way that they did so Joe Edwards will go back to the drawing board in that sense and maybe it's a little bit of game management in the fact that right if you're going to press for a lot for the first half you've maybe got to pick and choose your moments and conserve your energy at times where it was probably for 40 minutes of that first half all out so maybe it's looking at actually when they pick and choose those moments to press to be aggressive so they can do that for, for the, the entirety of the game Milan Van Ava is uh, leading the, the chance as they just walk around the perimeter of the pitch and here he goes again Van Ava <laughs> he's, he's almost falling over in, his, in that sort of desperation to do the clock sort of yay 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 oh, don't, don't yeah. let Jamie Carragher see that it'll be over celebrating yeah exactly we don't want the celebration police on the phone <laughs> but that is only still one home defeat for Coventry all season and they are very much in amongst the business end of this championship season and you would write them off Courtney Sweet McCurk at your peril well yeah and I think I said this earlier in the season when they're, they're a bit further down the table I said Coventry is, is my outside shout for them to make the playoffs and I said it at the time, I sort of said I don't think it was an outside shout. I knew that they'd get better. 
Um, and especially getting Callum O'Hare back, that's absolutely massive. You know the quality he brings. And actually, you probably you know, say this quietly around a lot of Coventry fans near me, but they probably need to you know, have a good run, get to the playoffs as a minimum and try and get to the Premier League because if they don't, I don't know if they're going to keep, keep hold of him. Well, they want a new contract out of him and that's yet to be agreed. Um, maybe that's predicated from Callum O'Hare's point of view as to where Coventry end up at the end of the season because he's probably thinking they've looked after me whilst I've been out all this time mm. with an injury. I, it's You know, I've got to repay them, but business is business. Look, it, it's players' dreams, isn't it, to play at the highest level, to, to play in the Premier League. And you're right, they've looked after him. He had a horrendous injury. And, and he's paying them back now in the way that he's playing. But also, you know, loyalty in football, it's one of those strange things that always gets said. But as players, normally, as soon as you're not useful to a club, you know, that they, they get rid of you and, and that disappears, that loyalty at times. So I understand it from a fan's perspective, but sometimes you've, you've got to think about yourself in football as a player. And look, he's he's top quality. He deserves to be playing in the Premier League dance. That's as simple as that. He wanted that penalty, I'm <laughs> sure, didn't he? Well, that uh, Hadji Wright took off his toe, but Hadji Wright scored it to bring Coventry level and then Wright with a winner three minutes later to give the Coventry fans a very happy journey back home Courtney thanks for your company this afternoon as always here on TalkSport 2 your home of the EFL your next live football is on TalkSport tomorrow night Monday night game night from Selhurst Park with Adrian Durham Sam Matterface and Danny Murphy that's Crystal Palace against Chelsea Super Bowl tonight at half past ten on TalkSport